Uh, wait a minute. Okay, uh, it's just the wrong way around. We'll see. How do you flip screen? Ah, there we go. Hey, we saw it. A third time lucky. Uh, uh, rubbish quality, actually, though. But one second. Yeah, I think it's a lot to do with the the front facing camera, isn't it? Um, I think so. This is the tablet I was. I'm, I'm running a bit on now. So anyway, that'll be it. That'll be it. Fine now. There we go. You can see each other now. I don't know what was wrong with my phone. That's a bit odd. Weird. The, yeah. The gremlins. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. <laughs> it's Friday. How, how you been doing? How you been keeping? Yeah, good, man. Good. Yeah. Fight, fighting, fighting algae in my own tank, but I'm winning now. Are you? What, what, what have you got? Oh, mate, I just come out of a five-day blackout. So um, I, I saw them alive, yeah. I had pretty much everything. I had cyanobacteria. I had mm. staghorn algae. I had BBA. Mm. Only small amount of BBA, but I got it. I so I just blacked out. That's that. something I've never actually had before. I've never had BBA before. No, never. Not once. No. Uh, Lucky you. I, I, I've heard <laughs> that high, high, spot dosing hydrogen peroxide works quite well. I've seen. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what I tend to do is. Uh, remove as much as you can, you know, mm -hmm. yourself first. Like, wire brush. Sort of, well, not necessarily wire brush, but like like plants on deck or, yeah, but on things mm -hmm. like plants and stuff, just cut off affected leaves. It's easier. Yeah, um, and then you can spot treat. Mm -hmm. I'd also keep some good algae eaters in the tank in the first place because I think if you keep a lot of shrimp in the tank, they can sort of eat a lot of the... Um, uh, the um yeah, the snails are probably the best for the black blackbeard. I would say before before it turns into blackbeard, if you know what I mean. Right, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. The biofilm. Don't know what's going on. It was a uh, lost connection, I guess. Yeah, it, it did look. It looked more like a lost connection than anything else. We're off to a great start. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like three to three times we tried, and uh, he, he, midway through a conversation, it just kicks you off. Uh, what sorry. are we talking about? Blackbeard uh, algae. Right, algae and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you have a lot of problems. Hydrogen peroxide, yes, I know that works. Um, the other thing that I, I like to use is liquid carbon and mm -hmm. if you drop the water level, take a paintbrush and paint it neat onto it. Leave right. it for a few set for a, a minute or so <clears throat> before you fill it fill back up. The best time to do is during a water change, obviously. So you um drop it down, yeah, yeah. paint it with a paintbrush neat and just mm -hmm. whatever you got to do in the tank. And then by the time you come to fill it back up, then the liquid carbon would have just yeah. killed it off and then you fill it back up and then it's dead then. I've um, heard that before with liquid carbon. Um, it works, uh, but you can only drain the water level so far and get so much. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's it, it's more for things like deco. I mean, if it's on a plant, you just trim the leaf off. It's easier yeah, than try, yeah. trying to paint it on, you know, it's... But for things like rocks and stuff like that, but also like stuff like um, true aquatic plants like ballast, they absolutely hate liquid carbon. They melt. I've never actually kept ballast myself. No. No, I I keep it in a few customers' tanks because they're low tech tanks, um, and ballast mm. basically just yeah, it seems to work quite well. Grows like stink. Yeah, it's really good. I mean, the, the tank behind me. This is the first um, high tech system I've ever run because I've never had to run a high tech system before, um, and I just wanted to see if I could do it and. You got some in the back, haven't you? Yeah. No, no, I know Valis. I got Balance in mine. Oh, okay, okay, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. Valis would have Valis would have just grown too to too too fast, and it would just be too much maintenance. Especially with the CO two, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, well, I mean, the Balance grows quick enough, but if I use Valis, it would it's a super fast grower, and it runs everywhere as well. So, mm. um, yeah, so I'm slowly I'm slowly winning. I'm gonna do a video for my YouTube channel on. Yeah, definitely, definitely should, yeah. And uh, show other people how you've, uh, I know. Yeah, like, right. yeah, like like George said, um, I don't yeah. think I've got any pictures or video of my actual tank with Sino. That's uh, the problem, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Trying to actually bring yourself to take photos of or bad photos of a tank when you can't yeah. stand to look at it yourself. Yeah, well, we all get algae. Everybody does. It doesn't matter whether you're, you know Takashi Amano or flipping. Joe Bloggs up the road who's just started his first fish tank. Everyone's going to get algae one way, one way or another. It just happens. It's just life. It does. Uh, it's it's, yeah, it's, it's just knowing how to deal with it is the is the issue, isn't I, it? I, yeah, yeah, I find the best way to deal with it is to I, I like to make a list of um, all the 
possible things that could possibly go wrong or the things I'm doing wrong, like what is your lighting, your CO2, your fertilizer, um, blah, 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 your everything. And um, then go through the list and tick off the things that I know that mm. I've uh, done correctly and the things that I'm doing wrong. Yeah. And then that way I can find out, you know, by picking which ones I do wrong, I can then maybe tweak that yeah. one. And I wait a week, wait two weeks, and then see if that made a change. Mm. And then go from there instead of uh, going for the nuclear option and using like pest, you know. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't like use I don't like using chemicals if I can if I can help it. But like um, with this with this case behind me, um, it got to such a stage where manual removal is not an option. And like if you cut every sort of leaf or whatever that's got any algae on it, yeah, yeah. you have no plants left. So that's great. Blackout's great. I mean, I wouldn't go for any longer than a week. I did mine mm -hmm. for I did mine for yeah. five for five days. Um yeah, yeah. and just completely got rid of Sino. Completely gone. Nothing. Mm -hmm. Um and that's yeah. not chemicals, nothing. It's a, to, it's a difficult one to get rid of. Um, I've had success with uh, a complete hydrogen peroxide dosage. You dose the whole water column. Mm. Um, that, that's one option. But also, I've heard of uh, ChemiClean is quite a popular thing that people use to get rid of. It's trying cyanide. to get in the UK, though. It's hard to get. Um, yes, I got. I had a friend send me it across. Um, it didn't actually work for me. Maybe I didn't use high enough. But mm. other options, I'm sure that uh, you know, Arc Aquatics have some bacteria that does well. And also, ADA have a product um, that you know, supposedly gets rid of... Uh... Yeah, I mean, I've never had Sino before. I think I had it in one tank. Um, and it's usually, in my experience, down to like low flow in that area. It's like maybe right. a, a, a slow spot. It certainly was in my tank anyway. Um, I had it in... It, two... it generally originates from the substrate. Yeah, it originates from the substrate. Um, but it's usually in low flow, low flow areas of your tank, right. I usually find. Um, not always, not in every case, but I mean, that's where it started in my tank and that's where it was in the previous tank that I had. Um, but in this tank behind me, I haven't got any like um, bottom dwellers. So like uh, Corey's mm -hmm. and I think to sift through the substrate because um, they help keep it down. They, because obviously um, they can turn this in the Somewhere so, I read that it's actually quite dangerous for uh, shrimp or um, invertebrates to actually eat it. Um, yeah, I mean... I'm not sure how, how true that is, but um, I've not I've heard. Read that. That. I've not heard that. I know some people. I know some people have said that. I, a mate of mine has said that to me as well before. Um, yeah. But like, if I think if you've got bottom dwellers that are constantly turning the sand and sifting the sand, sure. then it's going to be less likely to occur. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I don't know if there's actually a correlation between any nutrients or any or any like, thing that actually brings up cyano. I'm not sure if it's that you brought it in from an outside source. Um, I've been I told think, that uh, you know there's not any direct correlation between anything going wrong. It could just be chance that you brought it in from the outside. Yeah, plants, fish. yeah, yeah. Yeah, could have been. yeah, it could have been. But anyway, it's on top of now, and so I'm just, yeah. uh, I'm just keeping on top of it. I'm bricking it though, kind of at the minute because I'm my CO2 uh, regulator is touching the red, and it's like, where the hell do I get? my fire extinguisher from because yeah. the place I used to get it filled up um, is closed, obviously. Um, and then I don't really fancy paying like 40 quid for that. Uh, you said that. Mine ran out uh, yesterday. So um, I uh, I use a soda stream canister. Mm. So I'm, I'm um, lucky enough just to order one online. But uh, usually I would um, do an, ex like an exchange thing where you hand in the old empty one for a yeah. new fresh one. That one I had to buy a new canister, I guess, so. Yeah, yeah. So I'm kind of breaking it at the minute. Where do I get a CO2 caster from? CO2 because I use a two k uh, two kg fire extinguisher on mine. I wonder if there's any like uh, breweries near you that are still running. Um, I guess it's a fire extinguisher. You can't really. Yeah, uh, because the brewery cylinders are really big, and I haven't got the space for it. Oh no, no, they they they, they actually fill up um, canisters. Um, oh right, yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, they have the ability. To put they have the ability to fill up canisters um, for people's home breweries. So that's an option that people use. Yeah, that's a fast true. I've got a brewery not far from me. Thomas Walken, actually. Yeah. A Welsh Welsh brewery. I'll have to right. give, him a, give him a buzz. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, enough about algae, because I'm sick of the death of breeding like, algae. I they fire extinguishers, but maybe. Yeah, I mean, it's a CO2 bottle. They, yeah. might, they might say, no, sling your rock. 
worth a try. Yeah, worth a worth a call, I suppose. Yeah, because literally at the top of my estate where I live, um, mm. I just go through a little lane, and then like there's a place called Checkfire that they're right there, and that, that's what they do. They like decommission and then like refurb fire extinguishers, and then like they sell them out. They they sort of wow. you know sell them then to whoever. That's where oh. you got it then. Uh, I got mine through a friend actually. She she works for um, a company that does like fire extinguishers and security and fire alarms and smoke detectors and all that kind of stuff. So she got she got me mine, but they're actually closed right now at the moment, and everyone's working from home. So yeah. I'm not knack- I'm knackered there as well. <laughs> you get it online, like empty cylinders, but it's pretty weird to fill them up. Are you going to fill them up? That's it. It seems a waste because I always meant to get a spare, but obviously that was before all this happened. Mm-hmm. And you know, this was up and running, and I just forgot all about it. One thing and another family, life, kids, all the rest of it gets in the way, doesn't it? So it's just yes, a gift yeah. of uh, so it's not something you think of. You think about your fertilizer, your fish food, but you never think about the CO2. No, um, and then you look at your reg and you go, oh my God. The needle's touching the red. Jesus, I need to... Um, oh, Sam's joined. Hello, Sam. I'm supposed to be doing a live stream with him one day as well. Yeah, uh, did that go through? Yeah. Uh, Samuel Gambarini. Oh, yeah, of course, yeah. Sure. Yeah, I'm supposed to be doing one with him. So, hi, mate. How are you doing? <laughs> you just joined. Um, yeah, so tell me a little bit about you. Um, obviously, you've cropped up on um, my Instagram and Facebook, and I think we've been following each other for, for a while, but... Mm. So, what's, what's so, yeah, going on? About, uh, I don't know how long ago now. Nearly two years ago, I started Instagram. Well, just not, no, nearly over a year ago, I started Instagram. And uh, from the start, I, I did quite well. I gained a few followers quite quickly. And uh, it was just that I wanted, uh, I don't know, I wanted just to keep my photos somewhere that would uh, give me like a photo bank, I guess. Oh, my aquascapes. That was, that was all it came up to, I, I thought. Oh, well, I'll start an Instagram. I've got this new new aquascape. I'm going to build this new aquascape, so I'll start an Instagram. And it kind of just went from there. Um, since then, I guess I've got a wee bit larger and uh, more tanks and more aquascapes. And uh, um, I've uh, been in contact with a few brands. Uh, also, um, I was meant to be in London this start of last week, I guess, um, and doing an ADA workshop, helping the guys from ADA, because they were coming from Japan to London at Kew Gardens so that was meant to happen but I didn't yeah that's right uh, J- JM I don't know if he's still yeah yeah, Jean, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah definitely um, so that, yeah I know I know Jean quite well um, so that he uh, reached out to me and uh, asked for some help and uh, that's how that came up, came together um, apart from that there's been a few well I, guess I suppose like workshops or at least demonstrations uh, my local to me that I'm meant to be doing for some uh, you know, places, but that hasn't happened as well due to the current yeah, circumstances. Same here, yeah. It's kind of affecting everyone, you know, like all your plans for this uh, kind of year almost. Of uh, yeah, I had good, I had a good year planned out, but uh, definitely affected yeah, it. Definitely. So I guess uh, I guess I had a lot of things coming up that might have made me a wee bit more, maybe recognised, I suppose. Um, but uh, things change. That, 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 I'm sure they all happen eventually, but. Um, that's how it goes, isn't it? Yeah. So what have you been up to? Just um, clients, uh, not not private clients, right? You're just doing. Uh... Yeah, just just keeping the uh, commercial clients ticking over for now. So I mean, yeah, it's this it's nowhere near what I was doing before. Um, sure. As far as Are you doing predominantly private clients or. Uh... Uh, mostly private, yeah, but I do, I, I do, I do quite. I do quite a few um, commercial clients, but it's mostly private customers. What, what uh, do you prefer? <laughs> what do I prefer? Um, I prefer private clients, really, because not so much that I've got more freedom as such, but it's... it's um, I don't know. It's hard to say because like businesses tend to be more careful, should we say, um they've always got like proper tight budgets and sure, you know sure. you, you've got to you've got to basically make make a silk purse out of a sow's ear effectively do you know what i mean so right. you, you've got to try and pull a rabbit out of a hat do you know what i mean and try and make make the best you possibly can 
with the resources that you've got. Um, you know, um, often a client will come to me and they'll say, you know, um, I want X, Y, Z. How much is it going to cost me? And um, when you start going through how much hardscape costs and how much planting plants cost and how much soil is without your, you know, without your fee on top of that, and they're like, oh, is there a cheaper way we can do it? Which is why I started doing a lot of the ADG style stuff. Um, uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. The, the hardscape only and minimalistic stuff because it's cheaper, you know. Mm-hmm. You know, with a decent amount of rocks and a decent amount of wood and some cheap sand, you can pretty much yeah. create something, you know, really nice that is no maintenance other than sort of water changes and feeding fish. So that's why I started doing a lot of that because it makes mm, like – more sense if um in a com- in a commercial situation um i would say so because, especially now that the aquascaping is not big in the uk right now um so the predominantly the hobby is based around fish keeping yeah. and um people want to keep these bright colorful fish and they, they haven't really seen these bright colorful plants i, I suppose um, yeah so right. it's not a large driving force and people are saying that I want this um, beautiful aquascape because they don't really know what an aquascape is. Yeah. Um, even the stores in the UK, there's some really good ones. Um, but up in Scotland, for example, or I'm not sure how Wales is, um, but uh, there's not a lot up here um, aquascaping wise, especially not spe- speciality stores. No, so there's nothing the down client, here. The clients don't know what to, there's not this image or them to ask, can I have this? Because they, they don't know that's right. I suppose. Which is which is a good which is a good reason. Which is you know I I'm I'm fortunate enough to be working with a few companies um, and do workshops and it's funny like it's great to inspire people. Is there's, there's there's no better feeling than someone coming up to you and saying you know how do you can you talk me through this? Can you give me some tips and you know can you help me out and stuff? And it's like I've literally I did a workshop uh, back last year. Um, for Aquatic Warehouse that's in Swansea. They've since closed down now. Sure, um, right, okay. But that was purely just just dumb luck, basically. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know exactly what went on, but anyway, they closed down now. And I, I literally went around the shop with a customer and basically bought everything they needed and talked them through what they needed to do. And... Yeah they sent me a message later saying, Oh, thanks for all your help. Thanks for all your advice. Um, this is my tank. What do you think? And it was like, yeah, it's great. It's really nice to hear yeah. that your, uh, you know, your, your opinions and your help has actually helped someone to create something that they are really proud of. It makes my job while, cause I mean, a lot of my, a lot of my work is like maintenance and servicing. Um, and it's like, it's kind of the bread and butter, but of course, um, what I love doing is the installs and the aquascapes. That's what I love sure. because it's this the it's creative, isn't it? It's creating something. Yeah, uh, that creative output is important. Yeah, and I'm I'm fortunate really that I've had a couple of customers recently. Like I I did um a tank in a in a school where it's just the caretaker opened up for me. I was there by myself, and there was a um, receptionist like in the office, and that was it. I was left to do. Come and go, come and go as I pleased. You know, I could take my time over it. There was no rushing. I didn't have to be in, you know, a certain time and out by a certain time. I could just take my time, you know, and do what I needed yeah, to do, which was great. Um, and I've got another uh, Fluval Flex, uh, but the 123 liter one, the big one. I haven't seen this. I've got one of those coming up now soon. Um, the tanks in the shop ready for me to pick up. Um, nope, nope. And then I gotta basically speak to the customer and then see body where, which way he wants to go with it. So that's quite exciting. I'm looking forward to doing it. Yeah, yeah, um, because it's going into um, a house for well, a bungalow for his stepfather that's got, I think, it's either dementia or Alzheimer's. So, so it's some, some sort of a um, a release, I suppose. Yeah. Or yeah. A relaxation tool. Yeah, that's it, and it. There's there's a lot of sort of studies to suggest that it's really beneficial for people who have got like Alzheimer's and and um, 
go to Manchester. So I'm quite looking forward to that. Yeah. Okay, that would be interesting. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. You got any projects coming up? Anything you're working on? Personally, uh, I, I just started a new aquascape actually. Um, so it's more like a Brazilian style. I'm not sure if anyone's seen it on my page, but so I just started that wrong uh, end of week three, I think now. So um, going into the, coming up a month nearly, um, it's coming along well. Plants are just establishing and starting to color up. Um, apart from that, I haven't really got anything. Uh, as I said, a lot of my plans this year have been kind of like cancelled, and I guess they were out, kind of out with my own home. You can only have so many tanks in your own house. Yeah, uh, I'm, only, I, I'm only allowed one. Are you? Yeah. <laughs> I'm only allowed one. one is. <laughs> it's 90, 50, 50, it is. Yeah, yeah. So it's 240 litres or thereabouts. It's pretty big, pretty big. Yeah, I've I, I only got two small tanks. i got a 45 centimetre and a 60 centimetre. So uh, they're, they're pretty small, but easy to manage um, when you're constantly rescaping like I usually do. Yeah. Um, you know, to get that content, you need to uh, kind of like produce new aquascapes every so often. And yeah. Something different for your... I've been toying with the idea of this because originally I was I was growing trying to grow it in for the IEPLC, but it just sure. it it just didn't turn out it didn't turn out how I wanted it to. Um, mm -hmm. And there's no point turning in something that's you know that's not not good enough. So I, I'm not going to. I don't think I'm going to enter it this this year. In fact, I know I'm not going to enter it this year because it's not ready. You know. Oh, next year though. If, if yeah, you're, yeah. If you're in the competitions, then. Yeah. Yeah, go for it. yeah, yeah, I might, I might do. I don't know. I'm, I'm thinking of doing it just to give you that little bit more, to give me a little bit more credibility, I suppose. But I mean, what that means to the the labour and I, you know, the average person, I don't know. So, I mean, mm -hmm. in the in the aquascaping world, I suppose it gives me more credibility. But I don't suppose Joe Blogs cares, to be honest. It's it's, it's, it's for yourself. It's not really for anyone else, I suppose. Um, to prove yourself that you know you can, you know you're happy with your scoring, or this is what you expected, or maybe yeah. you did better than you think, and it's yeah. just, uh, just self gratification in a way. And yeah, I mean we, I I've just, anything we do, so. yeah, I've discussed this before with other people, like Felipe, Adam, and a few others, and it's too to me like the IOPLC now is gone away from. What did John say this year? Everybody that enters IAPLC gets a gift. Oh, <laughs> I, I might enter it just for that. Who knows? No, uh, I, think, I think he's lying. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's the twentieth. It's, it's the twentieth um, anniversary, I think. Yeah, um, yeah, that's right. Yeah, actually, I remember him saying he's going to buy a beer to everyone that joins. <laughs> <laughs> um, what was I? What was I saying? I forgot where I was going now. My brain's gone. Uh, you, you, yeah, yeah, um, definitely. It's more, it's more of a competitive thing, and it's everyone's against each other instead of the um, kind of opposite, where everyone's uh, kind of a community. Um, yeah, that community is uh, quite strong in aquascaping. I think it's quite important, um, definitely. Yeah, um, I find I find this is is very diorama based as well now these days. I mean, a few years ago, somebody did win with the uh, you know classic nature. Uh, aquarium style um, but yeah it's definitely diorama based or that kind of idea um, it, yeah although there is other competitions out there which I find quite interesting that you know put it put things to categories rather than everyone just competing for the same one top, you know and same first prize second prize third prize there is these first prize second prize third prize over um, different categories so you might have you might win the Wabikusa or you might win the um, biotope, or you might win the nature aquarium style. Yeah, um, I quite like that idea. I think that's a really good um, way to take this forward in the competition styles. You, I'll, I'll let you into. I mean, Jean Jean knows, and he might have mentioned it to you, but there is shortly going to be a UK contest. Yeah, there's, there's. I think there's a couple, a couple contests coming up, um, a new, new ones as well. Um, I do. I have heard of a few new ones. Um, I, I, another one, actually, a new one. The um, CO2 art are starting to run their little own I've entered, contest. I've, I've entered that one. Yeah, yeah. I've I might, I might. Um, but I only had a couple of photos on my phone. 
of before everything went to mm. you know what and um still some time i mean i think I, I think there's a wee bit of time for the c o t r competition yeah Could, uh, I've, a wee bit and, yeah i've already uh, en- i've already entered it, but we'll see we'll see what happens over the next I'm sure, I'm sure you could overwrite it if you have a better photo yeah i'll have a look and see um but yeah the as as jean mentioned uh jean, yeah. jean john i don't know i don't know how to pronounce it i don't know i'm pro- I'm probably wrong it as well <laughs> um because i know there's uh like jean jean is a is a french name isn't it um sure yes i think so you're probably right and i'm probably wrong i oh, don't worry <laughs> about it either way either way <laughs> yeah I, I, approached, I approached i approached him um to help out with uh or find out about uh oh you haven't okay that's cool so it's an exclusive and he doesn't know um the uk aplc yeah no he, he didn't mention it to me now well it's coming um we're about three quarters of the way through the um website now um all the okay. all the judges cool. all the judges are confirmed all the the bios have been sent and pictures have been sent right um and that is going to be a category based aquascaping contest as well yeah yeah that's good that's good cool um and it's being run by okay yeah this being yeah, run... you mentioning something else it was uh, there's yeah. a couple other ones that i've uh, heard of and they're coming up soon yeah it's being run by um myself and a few of the other admins of the the uk facebook group um some wicked prizes by some awesome companies um shall i name them <laughs> is this the first time you're telling anyone about it uh, you, uh no a few people a few people know um mm-hmm. george george knows about it um felipe knows about it eddie will watch mm-hmm. the stream and know about it it's not a secret it's, it's yeah, it, was, sure, sure. it was supposed to be released and we've been working on it since last year um but josh <laughs> but josh the guy who's doing the um website he does yeah. it for, he does it for a job um and one thing and another you know setbacks and you know personal things going on and whatever it's um it's just taken a few setbacks but we're nearly there now um the list of prizes is almost complete i'm just waiting for a few other people to confirm um and but all the judges are there are in place um and we've got some we've got some awesome judges some awesome prizes um so yeah i can't wait to see what ha- what what happens i don't know if am i if i'm even allowed to enter because i'm not judging i'm just helping to run it sure. um we've got basically the three categories uh nature aquarium style biotope style not specific um and reef oh really okay that's cool yeah I've, that's never been i don't one think... of these large microscaping contests has it no i don't think it's ever been done and the reason yeah. is because it's such a massive part of the hobby um okay. and i think it'll give a lot of marine keepers a bit of a kick up the bum to try and produce something a little bit more artistic than a pile of rocks but also it might even bring some aquascapers over to marine or even marine over to aquascaping yeah. so yeah exactly uh, really, really good idea i think yeah yeah definitely i'm joking by the way but um <laughs> are you <laughs> no, no 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 reef is reef is in there it's definitely in there no yeah. i wanted the, i wanted the guys to be uh, represented oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, sure, yeah. Because they're not. I mean, when so when, when you, you got any like uh, marine specialists as one of the judges or um, one guy who does know is marine, um, who is a judge, is Ivan McColgy. Mm-hmm. Um, because I've talked to him extensively about various different things, especially when I've been researching biotopes and stuff. Um, sure, sure. And what people, a lot of people, don't know about him is he's got hundreds and hundreds of and of hours of marine footage that he hasn't released um and also we yeah yeah so we've got some other people on there that know their know their stuff as well um george farmer's going to be a judge um we've got yeah. uh, takayushi fukada from japan he's he's a, he's a judge uh, yeah yeah I mean, if you if you don't know him, yeah. If you don't know him, I don't know. Yeah, hey, I don't know where you've been. Um, yeah, we've got uh, Tom Barr from the states. 
We've nope. got um, uh, Nathan Nathan Hill, PFK. Yeah, yeah. He's judging. Um, I'm trying to think of them all. There's loads, and I can't remember them all. Um, Mike Sensky from ADG. Um, he's judging as well. Um, yeah, there's quite people then. That's definitely a good selection. Oh. Oh yeah, and from all over the world as well. So, you know, we've got. Have you uh, mostly sourced the judges yourself, or? Yeah, yeah. I just, I was just cheeky and approached them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well done. This you've done well. That's a good selection of judges, isn't it? Oh yeah, I was, I was well chuffed when they all said yes. I, I thought they were going to say, ah, nah, no, nah, sorry, I'm a bit busy. You know, I'm busy that day. You know, something a bit different, and maybe that's why they've. You know, yeah, because I think initially when I mentioned it to George, I don't think he was overly like, oh, yes. And then when I sent him a link to the website and he was like, oh, actually, you know, there is yeah. there is something going on. Like, um, yeah, well, oh, and maybe in the future, I'm not sure whether we will turn it into like maybe a live event where you could go to and we'll have all sorts going on. But at the minute, it's just staying as a. Uh, online thing because it's, it's no like but award ceremony, ceremony or do you mean like a live aquascaping event no like an, an event with us with an award ceremony why not but um yeah, yeah it's gonna it's gonna need a lot of backing and a lot of money and a lot of organization to do something like that so Definitely. this this has just been done by me and a group of guys um for like no budget and we've just kind of gone cap in hand to people and just said like you know please sir help us out I guess that's the, that's the only way you can start, though, I suppose. Yeah. So In the best way. Yeah. It's out there. So, yeah, anyone, it's going to be only open to UK residents. Sorry to everybody else, but, you know, right. we, we need our own competition. <laughs> you've, got the, <laughs> you've got the EAPLC and you've got the IAPLC, so you're all right, you're covered if you want to join any of the contests. Mm. Um, it would definitely, definitely be good to promote that aquascaping in um, the UK a wee bit more. Well, yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, exactly. And I'm I'm guessing... I'm hoping that uh, Nathan will put it in the magazine as well. So it's going to make more and more people aware of it because obviously Practical Fish Keeper magazine is predominantly a fish keeper magazine, um, but they yeah. do cater for everybody. So it's like marine, freshwater, um, aquascapers and, you know, fish keepers, biotopers alike. So it's, it's, it's great. Um, yeah. yeah. The company supporting is, is massive. Um, That's like, huge. Yeah, we've got loads of companies contributing. I mean, Aquaflora, Pradibio, um, Aquariums for Life. Um, I've approached Awazi, but they haven't got back to me yet. Um, right. I've also approached Eheim. I'm waiting for them to get back to me. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, um, Blackwater UK, um, they're, they're yeah. helping to support the... Um, the I suppose uh, you're close yeah. to these brands. Um, it's good to ask those ones first. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, get back to the quickest. Yeah, Max Light, they're, right, yeah. they're contributing some stuff, some bits and pieces. Um, CO2 Art, I think, and uh, TNC, loads of loads of them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's there's some decent prizes. It's not a case of, um, you know, show us your tank and, you know, everyone will go woohoo. You actually got something to, to compete for. It's, um, is, it, is it a cash prize, I guess? I guess the, I, you like to talk about this? No, there's no, there's no cash prize. Um but mm-hmm. you will get like with Aquaflora, it's going to be like to the value of you know X amount, mm-hmm. whatever it is, um, for whoever wins, um, basically. Yeah, so yeah, that's that's the that's where we're at at the moment. So that's that's exciting yeah. and happening. So that'll be um, it's that's imminent. That's soon. Whenever um, as soon as Josh has sorted out the emails for all the judges, so obviously when the entries come in. They get emailed off to all the judges to be um, to be judged. So sometime this year or uh, next year? This year, yeah, but we'll extend we'll extend the deadline. Um, oh, mm-hmm. We wanted it to be sort of uh, after the IAPLC. So once everyone's entries has gone into the IAPLC, then obviously you can then, if you want to, you can send submit the same entry to ours if you want to do. It's not going to matter. We're not we're not gonna we're not going to be um, it has to be exclusive to us. It's going to be like, well, you can chuck it in as many contests as you want. Right, right. I think, um, that's, I think that's definitely, yeah, it's definitely the best way to go around that, I think, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we, we were going to have just like, um, we were supposed to release it back last year to give people like 12 months to get a tank together. Um, mm-hmm. But we'll probably release it 
um, this year and maybe give it either to the end of the year or maybe give them until like 2021 yeah, to, yeah. to, um, get, like get you need maybe four months to prepare for the competition. Yeah, I mean, most people, have running. I mean, yeah, I mean yeah. most people will have a tank. Most people will have a tank at home anyway, because if you're thinking of entering a contest, you either got a tank or you're planning a tank or, you know, you know, if you're entering a contest, you're going to have some form of, um, escape otherwise what are you what are you going to enter you know so yeah i suppose perhaps give someone six months maybe maybe eight because of obviously the way things are and going to shops and ordering stuff is is kind of difficult i mean yeah. although shout out to all the shops that are still operating and sending things out by a courier and stuff that's that's no, I, I, don't, I don't find i'm not finding it too difficult to find certain things a lot a lot of things are out of stock i found i mean that maybe that's the how hard it is to source the products for the shops and um, yeah know. i mean it could be and supply and demand because obviously everyone's yeah. stuck at home so lots of people who have got money um and are spending time with their tanks and spending money on their tanks now um because of the strange situation everyone finds themselves in i guess everyone's at home and uh, they're there for the delivery man as well so they can order the big parcels and they're going to be there instead of oh yeah. no i'm not going to order that because i'm at work you know? yeah that's right so um, yeah, that's that's the other bit of news. So what about you? Do you, do you is escaping like your full time thing? Is it like a part time thing? Do you work as well? I, I don't. I don't make any money off of aquascaping, really. Um, uh, I'm I'm a civil engineer. Okay. So that's what I do for a living. Right now, I'm working from home because of this uh, pandemic. Um, so I get to spend more time with my uh, aquascapes, I suppose. Um, but no, it's just a hobby for me right now. Um, a hobby that uh, I guess it's becoming a bit more of an obsession. <laughs> as it does. Um, but I, as I said, I have a few other things coming up. I did have a few other things coming up. And I guess they'll be postponed to later in the year or uh, next year sometime. Um, some workshops and things like this that um, will be good for me. Um, just enjoy it. See how, See where it takes me, I suppose. Yeah, Definitely. I think I think that's the best place. Best place to take it from is that it's a hobby, and you should enjoy it. And um, if it takes you somewhere, then uh, then great. But um, as long as you're enjoying the path, the road it takes you down, it's it's great. Yeah, I'm hoping. I'm hoping to. I mean, I I'd, I'd love a shot personally because there's nothing in Wales. There's nothing in Wales. I mean, the green machine up in North Wales that's yeah. gone. That closed down. Yeah, they suddenly so, retired, didn't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he shut. I think he shut the entire shop. The shop's gone. Shut. Mm -hmm. um, I think he released a book and then he retired. So, yeah. or, um, or semi-retired. I don't know exactly. I mean, one of the one of the guys I know on oh, Fancy Tanks, Colin. He knows. He knows him. He knows James. So, um, yeah, I think he said he's just doing nothing now, just chilling. The gene says I better spend him. <laughs> <laughs> A wee bit. Um, sponsors definitely help, though. That you know, definitely. Yeah. Who uh, are you allowed to say who you're who you're affiliated with? Uh, yeah, sure. Why not? Um, so I guess uh, I've had a few companies support me in the past. Um, Twinstar being one of them. Um, nice. So I've, I've always liked Twin. I mean, I don't support. I don't. Um, I'm very careful with who I'm. I get, I get associated with. Um, because you know, you're, I'm only going to use products that I've used before, or that I know are um, proven performers, or really yeah, um, yeah. things, something like things that I like. I would never promote something that I don't believe is should be promoted. Yeah, or something yeah. that I personally love. It's, it's just, I love. I really do love Twin Star. So they're 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 amazing lights. It's the same. Um, it's the same for me because um, I approached Max Light, uh, right. and they said yes, and I had to sign all sorts of paperwork and stuff. But mm -hmm. I mean, there's no way I could afford to spend that amount of money on, on a light fixture. It's only the fact yeah. that I'd seen that Adam Pascal had worked with them and like yeah. he promoted yeah. them and uh, Takeyushi had, and I was like, well, there must be something in it for these guys to be, uh, mm -hmm. to be pushing it. And like when they said yes, I was like, what? Little old me, you know, um, I'm just waiting for the, the, the shirts to be sent, sent to me now. Um, and then yeah that's official and then like Pradibio 
again, I was using I was using their products before um, before I I was an ambassador for them. Right, right, right. Because I found them in a local fish store, and I was like, "Oh, what's this? I've not seen this before. Oh, this is cool. I'll give this a go." And um, then I I found them online, and I was like, "Whoa, they're actually like a really big company." And yeah, yeah. And then again, I approached them, and that's that. Like, and CO two Art actually approached me. Um, yeah, definitely. You know, I, I'm also, I yeah, yeah. So and I, I'd never I I I said to him, look, I I've not even put CO two on a tank before, um, but I am planning it. They're like, okay, do it. Let me know. Let us know what you think. And I was like, whoa, cool, yeah. So that was probably that's happy. Something that's important is the customer support that you get from these companies. Um, CO two Art is one that I I'm also sponsored by CO two Art, and um, I, their customer service is just sure. amazing. CO2 yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> um no let's not do that uh yeah yeah, yeah definitely their they're, um their support team is really really good if you go on the website there's like a little chat you can chat to them with any of the problems they'll get back to you within an hour it's really really good um i've actually been sort of sponsored by um not for Divio, but not 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 directly um the lothian fish keeper um and, and obviously in lothian scotland yeah, um, he had a sort of a kind of deal with Prodivio, uh, and uh, I got the coil for my um, pond tank, and uh, so I started that with that. Um, oh, I know John. Yeah, John, John, John Mitchell is great. Yeah, he's a really nice guy. Yeah. He's been over to my house uh, um, once um, to uh, have a look at my tanks because he lives he lives quite close by actually. Okay, you up that you up that way? Are you? I'm, I'm on the other side of Edinburgh, but it's it's like. You know, it's like a twenty, thirty minute drive to hit him, you know, to my yeah. house from hit for him or vice versa. So yeah, it's quite quite accessible. Yeah. Um yeah, um I was said Twin Star, CO two R, Arc Aquatics, um yeah. the, the bacterial company. Mm. Um so yeah, I I their products are actually very, very good. Um the back the bacterial products that they produce are really, really high standard. I mean they do smell a wee bit, but um don't, don't they all? <laughs> yeah definitely but um, no, definitely really good for your startup and also the maintenance of your, your aquarium I, I really really do recommend the um, like special blend and the um, therapy uh, for your bacteria and your tank definitely yeah really I, use, I use all the, the Prodivio stuff um, yeah oh, yeah pretty about yeah I, obviously you get those little vials don't you and you crack them over the soil uh, yeah that's right yeah well, that's, sorry, yeah, that's, that's, that's when you that's when you first when you first set the system up that is right yeah 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 i used those for the um the pond tank at the beginning because that, that they come with the the soil right yeah they come free with the soil yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah and really good system. the soil is really really it packs a punch uh the pretty real soil yeah um, it's it's like, made in it's made in japan if i remember rightly yeah a yeah, lot I, of them are, yeah. Yeah, I don't think they make a lot of money on their soil. To be fair, when I spoke to um, when I spoke to them, I spoke to Roman, um, and I spoke to a few of the other guys there. They don't make a lot of money on the soil because it costs so much for them to produce. Right. right. But um, yeah, it's definitely it's good stuff. I I love it. I do. Yeah. No, it is. I I would recommend it. Actually, it's uh, really really good. The my pond tank right now is uh, running really really smoothly. Plants are growing nicely. There's no no CO2, so that's kind of a low tech tank. Cool. Um, so yeah, really really yeah. really good. Really we'll go, back, go back that way. I mean, if my CO2 if my CO2 bottle does die and I can't get another one, I might just dial my lights right down and I might go back. I might go back low tech. Mm. I might even go black water because I've done a black water system before and I I loved it. It was it was wicked. Really nice. Um, I, mean, so I might do that again. Mm. I think I, I always have a CO2 high tech tank in my house. I couldn't really live without it, to be honest. <laughs> I'm only allowed one. I'm only allowed one, so yeah. I've got to kind of do got to kind of do loads of things with one tank. The only thing with going, you know, from CO2 a CO2 tank to and then you you know having the same tank and then running out of CO2, even if you dial the lights back, there might be a problem. Yeah, algae issues. Yeah, I know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, <laughs> yeah, I know algae. Ooh, that old thing. Yeah, I, I don't know. I'd probably just, I'd probably just strip it all down. Like if I couldn't get on top of this now, and it was, you know, really starting to get me down, then I probably would just, re just start again and do something else. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that's the best way. Yeah, it's easier if you have a small, smaller tanks, and you can reshape every two months. <laughs> <laughs> 
three months. <laughs> yeah, it's certainly a it's certainly a messy job rescaping. I tell you that for that's for sure. A big tank, yeah, yeah, yeah. The little tanks, I can just tip them upside down. <laughs> but the big tanks, I guess you have to get the dustpan and brush and <sighs> and um, scoop up the soil, right? Yeah. Well, last year, I don't know if you, I don't know if you seen it. You might have done um, the big um, hardscape only tank I did, the white one. The white with a white, white cabinet, and well, and it's viewable from three sides. I think I might have. I think I might have seen this. Well, that's that's nine hundred. That's a nine hundred liter system. That is, um, and the tank itself is about three feet tall. Well, um, yeah. yeah, with without without the stands, of course, you can imagine I'm having to stand on a step ladder mm-hmm. in order to like lean over and reach inside. Um, the tank was too big to take off the stand to clean it. Um, so, yeah, that was a mission. We used a wet and dry vac on that. Ah, that's a good idea. In the end, we... Um, like a, the pipe, the pipe insulation, you can put them on the side of the tank and then you can lean on the side of the tank a bit more. Yeah, well, we, well, it was all right. I used a towel. We just rolled it and sort of leaned yeah. over. But, um, yeah, we I was using um, a shovel to get rid of the soil, which had literally turned to sludge because it'd been in there for years and it hadn't been maintained. Yeah. It basically went from being an old CO2 planted system with like a, an old JBL CO2 system on it. Um, but the, the guy whose house it was in, because he was away all the time um, and the people he had in, they were just changing his filter socks on his, on his sump. Um, that obviously, they, didn't, they weren't faffing with the tank. They didn't know how to to mess around with the tank so he was finding basically he was just looking bad so i i went through a few ideas with him and i showed him this because he wanted something that had the kind of was totally low maintenance but had the wow factor you know because he was kind of very into his interior design and stuff like that so i thought this is a perfect fit for him so yeah, we did that. So trying to suck out sort of four inches thick of black sludgy water. Oh mate, it was just it was a nightmare. It was difficult, it really was. And then we was moving everything around. We'd found that his bristle nose is bred, so there was babies everywhere. So we were trying to catch those and transfer them into okay. another tank. Yeah, and a nine hundred liter system it was oh, it was fun and games. Yeah. But we rescued. We were rescued. Most of them. Um, That's that to, yeah, well, so well, yeah, we didn't know. We'd started, we drained everything down, and it wasn't until we started, like, moving stuff around and we saw that there was, like, a ton of babies flying around. It was like, oh, quick. We siphoned them. We basically siphoned them off into a bucket and then tipped them into the tank downstairs that we had set up for them. So, um, yeah, we were we were lucky there, really. Um, yeah, chasing shrimp around the tank that big with a net to try and catch was, was fun as well. But um, yeah, that was it. Was it was challenging, but it was really worth it in the end to see the the it's end. Almost, it's almost impossible to get them all, isn't it? Really? Yeah, I mean, we may have yeah. missed one, but I think we tried to get them all. Yeah, I recently, but when I was rescaping my, it was only a forty-five centimeter tank, but there was over a hundred shrimp in there. Um, because I started with five, now a hundred. That's how it goes, isn't it? Um, I, I pretty much ripped the carpet out, put it in a separate bucket, ran the filler on there. And I was fishing out like five or ten shrimp every week that I never saw before. Um, it's really difficult, especially yeah. when they're small babies, yeah. Well, I recently put 40 shrimp into this tank behind me. Um, mm-hmm. And, yeah, you can um, you can imagine, they disappear. And you just don't see them. And then every now and again, you go, oh, look, there's one. And then it's gone. Right, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I definitely. When I, when I look in my pond tank, I see like, uh, I don't know, 20, 30 shrimp. But I know that there's over 100 in there. <laughs> well, the lights are dying down now. So I'll, I'll show you. I'll, I'll swing the camera around and I'll show you the tank. Yeah, okay. it's, not looking, it's not looking its best, but it's, it's all right. Right. Here's one of my shrimp. Oh, yeah. That's, that's a gold. Hybrid, uh, it's a gold um, F3 Michelin. Cool. You've got a nice CRS down there. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't see any of the others at the minute, but yeah, you'll get the idea. Yeah, when they start breeding, I guess that you'll see a lot more of them. 
So that's the tank as it is now. It's looking good, yeah. My everything's been purling like crazy. Um, but I'll show you. See, uh, where are we? See, um, see if we can get my finger in shot. There. Right. See, it's gone pink. Staghorn? Wait, yeah. No. Yeah, that was Staghorn. It's gone pink now. <laughs> Yeah. Hash, hashtag winning. Hydrogen, no, sorry, that's using the liquid CO2. Yeah, that's um I'm just do, I'm dosing the entire tank, yeah. Right. So straight out straight out of a blackout. Um big huge water change. Mm -hmm. Um and then I added um I think what is it? What is it they recommend? I think it's for highly planted tanks is two Two mil per fifty liters of water, I think it is. Right. Uh, so. Yeah, I think that's what they recommend. Um, and you can do that daily. So it's yeah. had two treatments. It's on a second treatment now since. Yeah. Are we are Friday? Yeah, since yesterday because Thursday's maintenance day for me. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so since yesterday, it's had two treatments and it's gone pink. So yes, winning. Yeah. Happy days. Yeah. So that's that's yeah, going. The final's gone. Yes, and. Um, yeah, I'd be playing around, be playing around with my lights as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, so yeah, so so it's all good. That's all. I, I seem to be winning with that. So yeah, I think once I get rid of any visual, visual algae, visible algae, and the plants yeah, yeah. will start looking green again, and what have you, then uh, yeah, I'll be uh, happy bunny then. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's all sent to try us, isn't it? Seems like every time I fix an algae problem, I get another one, though. <laughs> yeah, well, that, that's it, isn't it? At the, moment, at the moment, I don't have any. Um, I think uh, trial and error and learning in the past and having to fix it and getting it, and yeah, I think there's a learning curve in there. Um, so, uh, managed to fix. Were you were you a fish keeper then before you started aquascaping? No, I, not really. I mean... Um, so how did you? How did you? Years ago, maybe four, three years ago, uh, four years ago, or something like this, I um, randomly woke up one day and said, "I'm going to get a fish tank." It <laughs> <laughs> um, was uh, just something spontaneous, I guess. And I was like, "Yep, I'm going to get a fish tank." Um, so I went to the one of these local chain stores in the UK, and um, I went and bought this uh, 26 liter um, all-in-one kind of system. And I put a massive goldfish in it. <laughs> yes. Well, well, well. I, I put a small goldfish in it, and it grew to a massive goldfish. Yeah, and, I mean, um, I think, yeah. I think every anyone who's anyone who's ever started off with fish has probably yeah. done something similar. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was small as well, <laughs> but no. Um. So yeah, they advised me to get that, and uh, that was okay. But it wasn't. So I eventually. Gave that back back to well, I gave that to a pet store that I knew that was quite good in my local area up uh, way up north when I lived up north, oh. um, and then I guess I upgraded to a forty-five centimeter tank, and then I started playing around with the idea of aquascaping, but I didn't really know what aquascaping was. I was using um, active soils and I was using rocks that I, f I found locally. Um, I was kind of creating like rocky landscapes, but um, buying a few plants here and there. Didn't know how to grow them. Didn't know what CO two was. Didn't know what lighting was. What good lighting was. Didn't know what good fertilizers was. Um, but eventually, I found, uh, I guess, on Instagram and uh, um, certain sources online, see all these beautiful aquascapes. So I decided to do them for myself. Do you know and, what? That's, uh, that's that's that surprises me because I I often hear from. Um, new people or people new into the hobby coming in that a lot of the aquascapes that they see from the pro guys um, mm. you know uh, are unachievable they can't do it it's intimidating right. so um, especially at workshops because when I when I do a workshop I predominantly well 99% of the time it'll just be a low tech easy maintenance system sure. Num number one because the shop has to maintain it generally. Right. Um, and number two, most of the people walking into that shop have absolutely no idea what aquascaping is. So for you to then sell a product by, 
you know, a company or a manufacturer that you believe in, you've got to show, you've got to show them, you know, this is what it does. This is how good it is, you know, and then if it's their local store, then they're going to come back, you know, every couple of weeks or once a month or whatever, and then they're going to see how that tank transforms. So, right. you know, they'll be like, oh, yeah, the guy's not filling us full of bull. He, what he's saying is, was right. Oh, yeah, I'll have a bit of that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I think that's the stigma about, around um, CO2 and it being quite difficult and uh, hard and expensive even. Um, and although I seem, I, I think there's some sort of a want truth to that, but I wouldn't say it's difficult and I wouldn't say it's um, only aimed at ex experts. Beginners can definitely. I wouldn't. Say, I wouldn't say it was aimed at experts, but this being my first um, CO2 tank, I found. Mm. I, in my experience, I found dialing it in to be a bit tricky, like balancing it with your lights and your fertilizers, quite right. tricky. Because obviously, all all tanks are different. So, like someone will say to me, "Oh, how much CO2 should I put into a ninety fifty fifty, and what light shall I use?" And it's like, well, what plants are you going to use? What's your I, think I think there's, I think there's a couple of different ways of looking at it. I think there's you can you can look at it as this um, complex. You can go into the complexities of fertilizing, lighting, and CO two. But if you keep it down to the basics and um, yeah. you keep it down to the minute basics or something, by that drop checker. It's three colors. It's green, blue, yellow. You're looking for green. It, um, how much do you add to the tank? Green. Uh, not five bubbles per second, two bubbles per second, 15 bubbles per second. Green. I think that um, a lot of people make this too complicated and they ask around, how much do I add to my tank? Green. Um, <laughs> so I think, uh, <laughs> yeah, um, I've not thought it's, of that. It's not really too complicated when you actually think about it. If, as long as you, you get the right measuring device, which is just like a little little piece of liquid, it's like tenor, it's like a tenor. You yeah. get a little glass um, drop checker and you put the liquid in it and wait for it to turn green. And as long as it doesn't turn yellow, you're all good. You can yes. start a small amount. And then if it's not quite green, then increase in tiny amount. But yeah. it's not able to make it too complicated. My first system was 40 pounds. Right. So well, that would the regulator, the diffuser. We've got diffuse. ten. We've got ten seconds remaining. So if you wanna, okay. if you wanna carry this on, we can. If not, we can color. Actually, spent spelt here wrong. So I'm gonna correct myself. <laughs> yeah, don't worry about it, dude. I know what you meant. I know what you um, meant. Cool. Yeah. yeah. So, so 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 green. <laughs> green. Yeah. Green. Green. Green yeah, is a color. Yeah, I find that a lot of people do make it a bit too complicated, though. Um, uh, yeah, to I think... keep it simple, so, you know, the three colours are quite easy, so... Um... Yeah, I actually did get it yellow briefly, and I panicked. Yeah. Quick, turn it down, massive water change, put some fresh water back <laughs> oh, in. Yeah. It's not too bad. I mean, if it was a little bit yellow, I mean, just fix it quickly. It's not going to be a big, too big a problem. Yeah, I mean, I, I've, known, I've known a few people keep it on the green yellow borderline yeah i've definitely done that before yeah i know i know a few people who, who, who do that on purpose you know yeah the whole uh green green yellow borderline i know quite a few people that uh keep it at that and it's mm -hmm. like oh no that's to me that's living a bit too much on the edge i mean that's yeah. the, re the whole reason why i ended up with algae in the first place because i heard about the rich feeding method and mm -hmm. just went all guns blazing. So, like, you know, crank the CO2 up. So, as, you, as much as I dared to, um, you know, crank the light up and was banging fertilizers in like it was un, unheard of. Sort of like um, walking on the flip rope. <laughs> yeah, yeah, basically. And the plants grew like stink for like the first four months. I was cutting, you know, inches off every week. It was mm -hmm. ridiculous. Um, but then, like, like all good things it comes to an end and it all come crashing down. And I was like, ah, oh, well, I won't make that mistake again. Um, but yeah, it's one of those things you live and learn, isn't it? You, you, you try something, it doesn't work. You learn by it and you just do it a different way. Um, so now I'm sticking purely to like Felipe and Yuri's do the, the lean dosing. So sure, I'm, sure. I'm sticking, I'm sticking to that now. I mean, okay, things grow slower, but, it's less chance of a crash. There's, there's, there's pros and cons to both. I would say. Yeah, yeah, yeah there is. I mean, ju I mean, 
George Farmer, he, you ask him, he'll tell you he's openly, he fertilises every day and he probably fertilises maybe a little too much um, because the way he looks at it is he can correct that with a water change. He can just reset everything with a water change and then start again. Um, but, yeah, apparently you, you you get better reds by lean, dose, by lean dosing. So I've heard... To do with the uh, limits of the nitrogen and the warp, yeah, yeah, if you live yeah. With the nitrogen, it's sort of, um, yeah, the plants turn red basically. Uh, although, um, I would say the main driving factor between is uh, light plants being, yeah, it's light, yeah. it's high, high lighting will give you that red, deep red color, yeah, it, it will, it will because it's basically the plant's way of protecting itself from the sun, yes, that, yeah, that's right, yeah. Um, I think limiting the nitrogen, there is a a good post recently made by Dennis Wong. Um, you know, everybody knows him as one of the you know plant experts out there, and and he did a yeah. little comparison between uh, Rotella Hr, I think it was, um, on uh, five uh, parts per million of uh, nitrogen, uh, nitrate, sorry, and um, zero parts per million, and the difference was huge. And um, one was pink, and one was deep red. Mm. Um, but that that just proves the theory. The, um, limiting the yeah. nitrogen. But, apart, well. but uh, when I talked to Felipe about limiting nitrogen, he said it's it's dangerous and it shouldn't be done for any le any length of time, and it should only yeah. be done if your tank is really healthy. Otherwise, yes. you can cause yourself all sorts of problems. Yeah, that's right. The plants need all the all nutrients. They need all this this uh, broad spectrum of nutrients. Yes. If you're limiting yeah. one, then that becomes the limiting factor. Yeah, um, you're gonna have problems. Um, um, you're gonna have signs of uh, this nitrogen de deficiency. Mm. Um, you definitely will be dosing these uh, nutrients in the correct ratios, or then you're gonna have problems. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Right, I tell you, I tell you what. I mean, there's only five people watching. I was gonna say, oh, should we uh, um, ask if anyone wants any? Uh, well, wants to ask okay. us any questions, but I mean, there's yeah, only five. Yeah, yeah. And wrap it's... Up, yeah, it's quite late anyway. There's, there's only five people watching, <laughs> so I don't, I don't know <laughs> if um, I, we're going to bother. Yeah, there's not any questions here, really, so uh, I think we'll wrap, maybe, like, ask, uh, is anyone any questions, or um, maybe we'll just wrap this up. Somebody said they liked someone's hair, but it was like, I don't know whether they were referring to you or me. <laughs> probably yours, huh? I don't know. looks amazing. No, it looks like, mine looks like moss. Oh, I don't know. Quarantine haircut, is it? Oh, I had the COVID cut before it was uh, cool, mate. Yeah, oh, okay, okay. I, 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 I did mine, actually, so uh, um, it was quite difficult. I ended up making a big hole in the back of my head, um, <laughs> and it fixed itself. It kind of grew back in, so I'm kind of safe now, but I did cut my hair. Uh, have you got a YouTube channel then, dude? I do. I have uh, three videos. Um, oh, three um, videos. Three videos. I got the... I, got a set up my pond tank i've got that split up into two parts part one part two and i've got my recent uh tank planned the planting I, I mean youtube's are kind of like a learning curve as well you know so same here i mean i i use i use kinemaster everything i do is on my phone i film on my phone i edit on my phone just because it's like kinemaster is like such a a stripped down mm -hmm. video editing thing which is cool but it's still got like loads of functions and bits and pieces that i'm still yeah, learning yeah. and yeah, the, the, the other day, I um, I thought, right, I'm going to do this properly. I'm going to download a program, put it on my laptop, and, like, yeah. I'm going to do this proper. I sat down <laughs> with everything all around me, my phone plugged into it, all the videos <clears throat> and the clips and, you know, uh, photos and stuff that I needed. I thought, right, I'm going to do this. I loaded the program. I was like, what the hell is this? I can't understand this. And literally, <laughs> within an hour, I'd edited the video and uploaded it to YouTube. So I was like, um, so yeah, I use Adobe Rush, um, so it's a, it's a mobile app as well. Um, but I find it quite useful. I think there's a few a few questions actually. Oh, is there? Cool. Um, somebody asked me when's my new, my next build. Uh, I just I just set one up about three weeks ago. So um, that's that was my latest build. I'm not really planning to do something uh, right now in my my own per personal scapes, but. Maybe there'll be some sort of workshops or something like this eventually. Um, yeah, yeah. I was I was supposed to do one for Henlands Henlands Aquatics on the twenty eighth of March, um, yeah. which would have been. Yeah, I know. 
nightmare. Yeah. I, I, I was really looking forward to that as well. Um, yeah, I'm supposed to be doing a few others. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah this... definitely a lot of plans have been ruined. Um, but all these things will happen. They will happen. It's just yeah. um, postponed to a later date, I guess. Someone's saying they're back, they're back at work. When's a good time to add ferrets in the morning before I leave or when I get back? Yeah, definitely in the morning. Um, Whenever your lights that... go on. Well, yeah, 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 exactly. You, you want to be, um, you know, having that um, high nutrient content in the water when the plants can use it um, instead of when they're not using it. So That's right. Um, definitely in the morning. I, do, I dose every day, actually. Um, I, 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 I do dose sort of lean in a way. Um, I definitely don't dose more than required or high dosage, um, but I give the plants what they need. I think the misconception between lean dosing and this, the high, do the you know, the EI or whatever you like to call it, the overdosing, the overdosing, you really overdose um, and make sure that there's not a limiting factor. But the lean dosing, some people think um, lean dosing means to give your plants like really little nutrients, not enough nutrients. Mm. Um, but that's kind of wrong in the fact that you want to be giving your plants enough nutrients to thrive, but not too much as, you know, you're kind of wasting in a way. Um, yeah, yeah. But definitely so, to, to so, so basically, for argument's sake, say your yeah. tank, whatever size tank is, you need 20 mil of fertilizer for the week. You'll split that up into daily doses. That's, yeah. that's right. Yeah, yeah. So I'm not, yes. I'm not dosing the, that 20 mil each day or so, or so, but I split the weekly dose up into days. I find yeah. it's better probably to give the plants what they need on the day rather than um, to dump it all into the tank at once. And hopefully yeah. on that last day of the week, they have let nutrients left over. Um, I get. I know plants can store nutrients and soak in the so soak in the soil, but yeah, I mean, with the... with myself, um, I followed Felipe's um, fertilization routine. And yeah, to, to answer Sam and Sam's um, question, uh, go check out Felipe's video on his uh, regime. It's all on his Facebook. It's all on his YouTube channel, um, and it's, he does it like step by step. Um, but I literally littered the bottom of my substrate with um, nutrient, uh, tabs. nutrient tabs, yeah. Um, and then I I started off heavily fertilizing for the first few months, had my problem, and now I've cut right back now. So I'm just dosing, and I dose, I dose weekly. Yeah. yeah. Felipe's but, um, video is really, really good, actually. I recommend it. It was really, yeah. I watched it as well a while back, and I, I was quite taken by it. It was um, definitely um, it a nice uh, display of what he does. Everyone has their own versions and what they do. But, yeah. yeah, definitely a viable um, option. Yeah, it, um, well, it goes to prove it works because I mean the guy's highly ranked in the IAPLC. I mean the guy got the he invented the bonsai tree in a fish tank. Yeah. It was hit. It was him. Um, that did it first, and then everyone else has imitated it since. Yeah, he definitely popularized it, definitely to an extent where most people are trying now to yeah. create some sort of a similar idea. Yeah, that's um, right. Yeah, I really like Philippe's uh, tanks. They're they're definitely he's got a unique style. Have you ever? Um, I really like the, um, the heavy uh, stem plant um, use in his. Uh, yeah. Have you have you ever met him? No, not personally. No, no. I haven't. I, I I met him for the first time last year at um, at Fish Cove. Well, he did a workshop there with uh, with Balby. She's crazy. She is. She's bad as a box of frogs, yeah. but I great. I a couple of her uh, live streams. They're good, huh? Oh, she's <laughs> great. She's great, she is. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, uh, Felipe is like the fastest guy I've ever seen planting plants in my life. He is so quick. <laughs> yeah, he is yeah. so quick. I mean, just escape, just, just escape. The scape he did, and the and and the time that he did it in, and then the planting, it's just unreal. He's like a machine when he plants. He I really is. In a workshop, if he, because he does a lot. He does a few workshops, I'm, I presume. Oh, he does, um, there's loads. He travels all around the world, doesn't he? With exactly. uh, with, with aquaflora. So people don't want you want you to want to watch you plant for an hour. They they want you to talk to them and tell them about mm -hmm. um, what what your method is, but you know. You could be saying, "I'm putting the plant, the, the plants in now. I'm using this plant. I'm using this plant." But mm. the, the time it takes you to plant a big aquascape could be a quite a long time. Yeah. It's quite I, to, to watch I watched, that. yeah, I watched a couple of um, live workshops, stream, mm -hmm. 
and I find myself dipping in and out of it because as a sure. as a, a viewer to watch it, the whole sort of beginning process and the hardscaping process is quite interesting to watch because you 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 get more of an you get an idea of um like how how they do things and how they arrange wood and rocks and and etc. Um, yeah. And when the when the planting when the planting starts then. Once you see somebody sort of super glue a bit of moss to a bit of wood and um, you know <laughs> stuff, stuff Java fern into a into a crack in a rock or something, and then they start and it's like it does tend after a while it holds my attention for a while but then it gets a bit tedious and I just think right I'll I'll dip out of this now I'll go and make myself a coffee or whatever and I'll come back and dip back into it and see how far they've gone and uh, I think. Yeah, it can it can get if you're not engaged, especially if you're not engaging and like having a laugh yeah. with people. It's I think like that's the thing. Yeah, definitely. I, I mean, um, you definitely engage and talk about what you're doing. While yeah, you're I, doing. I don't know if you're the same as me, but I like to try and get people involved. If I do a workshop, I try and like get people involved. Right, that's good. So, like, um, like I said to you before about like people, ninety nine percent of the people who come into the shop they've not really had much experience with aquascaping. Either they've heard of it and not done it themselves or whatever. They don't really know what you're talking about. You know, get them to prep plants, get them to, like, you know, that kind of thing. Talk to them about super gluing, you know, yeah. plants to wood and rock and stuff like that and or yeah, tie yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah, get them involved. And I find it's a bit like going to a concert and making people sing along to your song. Um, yeah. So in the same way, but it's a bit more involved. Yeah. Yeah, it's good, and it, I think it makes you it makes you more approachable as well to people, you know. Mm-hmm. Whereas where you're less like a a teacher and more of like yeah, you know, come and have a go and have a look at this, you know. And Nick's just Nick's just joined. No, yeah, there's, a few, there's a few more comments, but um... yeah, Sam and Sam said, "How many tanks have you got at home?" Now I don't know if that's to me or you, but I've only got the one, so over to you. I've got two. Um, I've got a little Dua um, cube, uh, a little, um, you know those little Dua glass airs? Yeah, I know. With, like, you can put Wabakusa in them. Yeah, I've got one of those, but I, I haven't really showed it on my channel much. Um, but that, that's it, two tanks. Yeah, I don't think I can fit much more in the room. Um, so, yeah, I don't, think, I don't think my girlfriend would be very happy either. I've started fitting like uh, 150 liter tanks in the in the house. <laughs> need, a new, need, a new, need a new house or need a new flat for um, bigger tanks. Yeah, for sure. Get yourself a fish house. Yeah, nah. I don't know. I quite like them in the living room. Yeah, I do too. Do I like think. That? Yeah, I mean, when I first when I got my, I had a break from the hobby, and when I first come back, I had a tank. I just stuck it out the garage, and it was just a hobby. I was going to, um, I bred. Uh, blue-eyed bristle nose placos and then right. my wife said to me oh what's the point now in the tank out in the garage you may as well bring it in so i was like yes yeah it's the tank of the house. awesome i can just have a play around with it now and yeah it just went from there then so uh, and when you have it in front of you i guess that you're you're constantly putting your hand in fixing little things little details yeah yeah, yeah. i mean up till recently i had cover glasses on the top of my tank uh on the top of my tank yeah, I, just, right. I just took them off now um but the thing with my house is we get in the winter we suffer with condensation in the house, so I think when the winter comes, those glass covers may have to go back on. You could always try a dehumidifier. Um, that work. Yeah, I've used them before, but they they chew electricity. Or you, you can get throwaway ones, or even yeah, yeah, yeah I suppose. So. I've I suppose got them. So. I've got them. Yeah. They're in the corners of my rooms. <laughs> Just old. <laughs> They also old. get filled up pretty quick as well, though, don't they? Yeah, it's old house. It happens. It's it's known where I live. Like a lot of the houses around me have the same issue. So, but yeah. uh, only in the winter. We don't get it at all in summer. So hmm. we shall see. Anyone got any more questions? Yeah, before we wrap it up, because I want to go and have a beer now. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I'm thirsty. <laughs> yeah, my my mind is getting dry as well. Maybe yeah. I can, uh... Oops. Second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like we've had enough of talking to that Welshman no, now. I'm already gone. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>
Yeah, there's no, I don't think there's any more comments coming. No, right. Well, we'll we'll wrap it up for there then. So, yeah, I think we're gonna wrap it up. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks cool. For, thanks for having me. And uh, oh, that's nice right. Beer, I guess. Yes, it was good to speak to you. Anyway, you know, I've okay. followed followed you on Insta for a while and um, whatever. So yeah, it's good to um, have a chat. More people, more people should do it, man. I mean, we're all in the same boat, so Definitely. especially the UK. I think. Uh, yeah, yeah, for sure. You with your uh, uh, you. would be great, and uh, yeah, I can't wait for that. Workshops and all that. So yeah, yeah, cool. That. Hopefully we'll bump into each other when all this is over. Or well, we can or well, collab or something. Because I was supposed to be collabing with George, but it never happened because either our calendars didn't match up or one thing and another. So, yeah, be cool. If you're ever interested in anything, just uh, ask me. I'm sure I'll respond pretty quickly. And see what you <laughs> yeah, you're pretty, you're, pretty, um, you're pretty good with the old, um, what you call, social media, same as me. Uh, I, I try. I guess it's a learning. As I said, you just learn along your way and along the way. I've only been at this for just over a year, as I said. So, no, there's um, a nice, comment. there's a nice comment before we go. Um, you inspire me to start aquascaping. Wow, thank you. Well, if yeah, that's, you know that's what, if that's something to end, end on, it's really, really, uh, you know, really, really nice to hear um, when yeah. somebody says thank you, you've helped me, or you've inspired me, or you've given advice to someone, and then they show you the results of what they've came to, you know, produce. It's really, really nice. Um, yeah. So thank you a lot for that. It really does make someone's day when you yes. say that. And, yeah, I've someone's helped you. I'm guessing that's directed at you. <laughs> uh, well, I, I, I guess I was speaking for everyone, I suppose. Um, I'm joking. Not just myself. Yeah. So, uh, a bio main box. Thanks for that comment. It was uh, much appreciated. If you want to yeah, 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 follow yeah. follow us and then send us pictures of your escape once you've done it, that'd be cool. Be cool to see. Cool. It's always it's always yeah. a way in it when you're about to wrap up. More people start joining, and then you get asked more questions. It's like buses, isn't it? Yeah. Maybe maybe, maybe another day. Maybe another day. Anyway. Uh, yeah. Um, Mathscapes gave me a lot of advice. Anyway, I think we should stop before we get more comments. Yeah. I need a beer as well. Yeah, me too. <laughs> okay, right. Uh, I'll speak to you later then. See see you. Yeah. Yeah. Speak to you soon, mate. Bye bye. Ta da.